everybody, welcome to the JB and I show. I'm your host, Isaac Middleton. What's up, y'all? How you doing? <laughs> and today I have a special guest, returning guest for you. His name is Adam. All right, Adam, yo, tell everybody about yourself. Remind them who you are, man. <laughs> How's it going? I'm Adam, and I'm an avid lover of cinema. I pretty much am pursuing a career field in film studies, and I do have a presence on Instagram at Adam Chromacho. I will gladly spell that out. A-D-A-M-K-H-R-O-M-A-C-H-O-U. I'll spell it again a little slower. A-D-A-M-K-H-R-O-M-A-C-H-O-U. And you can also follow me on YouTube, Sunset Loner Cinema. Uh, developing some content, getting it out there. So really excited to be here. Absolutely. Welcome, welcome. All right. Yes. And today we're going to talk about a very popular uh, topic, you know, uh, the Snyder's Cut, Justice League. Oh, I've been hearing a lot of good stuff about it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what's your that opinion on it? You know, I, I've heard a lot of good stuff. Um, I'm actually probably going to watch it later this evening or this weekend, but uh, the reaction has been relatively positive so far. Um, considering that how disappointed a lot of people were with the original release back in 2017, it says a lot that they gave Zack Snyder the platform to release his cut. It is four hours long and it is done very uniquely. Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard that it's, of course, presented in black and white in a 4-3 format, which is 4-3 format, which is very much likened to classic cinema, which was part of his vision for the film. Mm -hmm. And uh, so far, the reception has actually been good. Some people have said, eh, I don't really care for it. doesn't really add much from the, you know, original cut. And then others have said it's just a completely different experience. So... At some point this weekend, I'm, I'm going to decide for myself how I feel and give it a shot. I've been going through the DCEU films, um, you know, of course, started with Man of Steel, went into Batman v Superman, did Suicide Squad. Uh, Wonder Woman is up next and I had a little bit of a technical difficulty with it last night. Yeah. So I'm probably one of the few people who still get DVDs in the mail through Netflix because mm -hmm. it's just cheaper to pay a monthly fee mm -hmm. than to just pay three, four dollars for every movie you rent. Yes. So, and of course, I don't like pirating. So, you know, it's uh, it's just something I'm not into. And uh, pretty much, yeah. Uh, DVD came in last night, or the Blu-ray, and it malfunctioned. It wouldn't play, so I had to send it back and wait for the next one to come in. So, yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, how do you feel about the DCU, Isaac? Because I know some yeah. people are into it, some people aren't. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, when i mean when they first was talking about the snyder cut zack snyder and everything it was a big movement a big push they really wanted it to happen and but at the time a lot of people were spent on as you mentioned they were disappointed in the uh justice league and everything and they were just like yeah nah we don't we don't need it <laughs> but it was a tremendous push on it and then finally they started decided you know okay yeah let's let's see how it goes let's see how it does you know and uh, the last couple of days, I've been looking at a lot of different uh, content creators and critics and stuff in regards to the movie. And if you listen to what they're saying, like maybe five years ago, in comparison to what they said, like uh, last, you know, several weeks or whatever, it's like night and day. Five years ago, they was like, no, no, we're done. I'm sorry. We're done. We're complete. We're, we're, it's over. It's over. <laughs> now, and lately, they're like, yes, you need to see it. It's awesome. It's like the best thing since sliced bread. And, <laughs> you know, so, so like day and night, they, they, they totally changed their tune, changed everything from what they were saying from before. And I'm just like, okay, okay. So, okay, yeah, I'm going to see it then. I'm going to check it out and see what it's about. I've watched uh, several uh, YouTubers, um, being a YouTuber myself, and <laughs> uh, they talked about it. And there were several clips that uh, they talked about and they showed and, and they were like, oh, OK, well, yes, that's different. And the total reconstruction of uh, Darkseid and uh, what's the other guy name? Do you remember? Uh, good question. Uh, I'm trying to remember. 
Steppenwolf. Steppenwolf. Yes, Steppenwolf. Steppenwolf. Almost said Doomsday, and I was like, wait, no, wrong, <laughs> wrong, wrong, wrong thing. It's all good. Yes, the the total reconstruction of Steppenwolf, and then showing Dark Side, and all of this other uh dynamics is like okay yeah that's definitely different because they you know if you know in the in the uh original justice league movie steppenwolf just looked like a dude with some armor on this guy looked like a straight up alien you know so he looked he was like okay yeah he's he's horrifying you know and and the storyline that they want to do to promote is more on the gloomier side of things it's not you know all flowers and rainbows and everything you know it's, it's like okay yeah we can you know the justice league you know can really lose this you know the heroes can lose you know type of a thing and um and showing the power of dark side you know even they like when he came the first time and they had like all of the united heroes of earth to push him back and and basically kick his butt <laughs> and then have you know stepping with come back you know with that iconic uh trailer that never manifested fi uh, five years ago where it was like there's no kryptonians there's no green lanterns there's no you know amazonians this world will fall you know <laughs> you know so it was, it was it was big you know and then when you when we watched the uh movie five years ago there was like what what was that part from where did that part come from what what's the meaning of it, you know? And now they're like, oh, I see how that fits in. You know, it's like totally different. So, and and they adjusted a lot of stuff that was um, like some stuff that was in the movie five years ago is not in this movie because they said it didn't support the storyline. And then there's obviously like a lot of stuff that's in this movie that wasn't in the movie five years ago. And it's like, okay, yeah, it's two totally different movies. And if you watch this one i am told that it's is in constantly engaging and you will not be uh bored even though it's a four-hour movie you know <clears throat> um it, it's like uh if you ever watch lord of the rings the 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 was well, a saga the trilogy you know is is it's, it's engaging you know throughout the entire yeah. movie and so I'm I'm expecting big things from it, especially watching some of the critics, because some of these critics are really brutal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think, you know, some may just even be going into it looking for reasons to dislike it because, you know, the DCU is coming off of, uh, you know, it's, it's coming off of uh, basically the success that the MCU had built for itself. Mm -hmm. um, the first film we got was in 2013, but it didn't really fully get established as a universe until Batman v Superman in 2016. So the MCU really, in a lot of ways, had an eight-year head start. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of, you know, some of these critics may not want the competition to come in. And I'm actually, when it comes to the DCEU, I'm actually, like, with a lot of the films, I'm relatively disappointed. Mm -hmm. um, I think Wonder Woman is fantastic. <laughs> I mean, that is my favorite one that has come out of this series. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, Man of Steel and Batman v Superman are very kind of, it's kind of like a, a scale, like a balancing scale. There's some mm -hmm. things I really like and there's some things I don't. Mm -hmm. So, and then, you know, of course, the original cut of Justice League that came out, I was just really disappointed with. Mm -hmm. So knowing that this this extended cut is coming out, that is more molding of the director's vision. I'm I'm into that, and I'm really just like, you know, I'm I'm ready to give it a shot and go in with an open mind, with no expectations, and just you know, hopefully be entertained. So absolutely, absolutely, I totally agree. One of the things that I was looking at, uh, as you mentioned, you know, Man of Steel. When Superman first came out, his first, you know, since the last Superman, since Superman returns and he comes back in and, and, and you know, he talked, you know, learning how to fly and all this other stuff. I liked it. I liked that, you know, and then they had, you know, the Zod, General Zod and all that. So there, there are aspects of it that I thought could have been a lot better, obviously, uh, but I thought it was o OK for the most part, you know, and, and but really kind of killed their momentum in my opinion was when it was batman versus superman and then they, you know they threw doomsday and there's like you know uh they tilted the entire like they showed 
Batman with all this emotion and frustration and anger and everything. And to have everything like that just tilt on, oh, your mother's name, Martha. My mother's name, Martha. Let, let's be friends, Martha. You know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, that don't make sense. All right. You know, <laughs> it, or if they would have done it like that, it would have been better if they would have, it would have had more of a dynamics to it. So when it came about, it, it would have made more sense, not just, oh, our mother's name on Martha. So let's be friends. You know, it's like, no, that, that don't make sense. So, um, and I think that was a really spiraling uh, downward. And then, you know, you had, you know, Wonder Woman in there and everything, but that couldn't save it. You know, and you had Aquaman. And so if you cut it up into parts, it was like, oh yeah, like this part here and this part over here, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But then there's like, yeah, as a whole, nah, nah. <laughs> and then uh, like, I like Wonder Woman. I also like uh, Aquaman. I like the Aquaman movie as well. Uh, but you know, there were certain parts of Aquaman that I thought they could have done better uh, additionally, but I was like, okay, but I, I liked it. It was overall good, you know? And it's, it's a long way from Aquaman of, uh, was it the Justice Friends was it was back in the day? Uh, but Super Friends. Super Friends, that's it. <laughs> Super Friends. <laughs> I was like, okay, well, way better than that, you know? And it was like, uh, and, and there were certain parts in there I like in there, uh, but I don't think that was an Aquaman, that was in Justice League, but it was like, you know, I heard you can talk to fish. <laughs> you know, I thought that was hilarious. But uh, uh, there, there's definitely uh, dynamics in there that made it really good. And then, um, yeah, DCU and movies has a long way to go to catch up with Marvel. Marvel have a commanding head start. Even when Marvel mess up, they still do better than the DC DC universe, unfortunately, in movies. You know, but um, the DC universe do well when it comes to animation and cartoons. They do well, especially with like Teen Titans and um, what's the other one? Young Justice, where it's yeah. like the younger vert, uh, you know, yeah. the sidekicks, I call them. But <laughs> and even even then, like, uh, there's a lot of just content, like a lot of animated Batman films based mm -hmm. on very, very specific uh, comic, like graphic novels in mm -hmm. this in this universe that are fantastic. Uh, a lot of them are on HBO Max. So uh, there's The Killing Joke. There's The Dark Knight Returns. Mm -hmm. um, and they're they're very epic they're very well made so yeah i would agree that they actually do really well in the animation department as compared to the live action films absolutely absolutely i, I totally agree I totally agree and then they had you know if they could bring that uh storytelling uh dynamics to the live action it would be great and i think you know of course cost has a lot to do with it and everything but you don't want to sacrifice too much because uh, you still want to be able to uh, engage the people and, and give them a good story so they can see themselves as the hero or as the villain or as the sidekick or whatever the case may be in, in that, you know, story, you know, and and being able to present that uh, properly is a major thing. And I think that Marvel was able to do that, whether you agree with it or not, they were able to do it. You know, it was like, cause like when they had, um, I think it was uh, in game and everybody got snapped. And then also like, you should have gone for the head, you know, <laughs> it was a big thing, you know? And, uh, but, you know, I think that if they are able to, continue to follow the Zack Snyder universe, as it were. Um, I think that they will do a lot better if it stays along the same lines and continue to give the same story and the same energy. I think that it will uh, catch up to, well, they shouldn't even look at, look at trying to catch up to Marvel. They should just focus on telling a great story, engaging their audience and, and doing the best they can with the uh, directing, acting, special effects, visual effects, all that stuff like that. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. I think you hit the nail on the head with that. Um, you know, they do 
put a huge emphasis on the stylization of the films, Mm -hmm. which, I mean, they're big budget blockbuster, you know, comic book franchise films. So Mm -hmm. yeah, they definitely want to take advantage of the, the access they have to a visual effects budget. But, you know, um, sometimes I feel like the film is so stylized and Mm -hmm. excessively uses visual effects to a point that I don't feel like I'm watching a movie. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm watching just this, like this, this, art form that is strictly depending on the way the environment around it looks Mm -hmm. and kind of does seem to forget a lot of the substance that comes with the storytelling because Mm -hmm. you know just like marvel dc also has a lot of substance in their characters and their storytelling and you know they're not really translating that from the comic books to the movies very well and I wish they would put a little more focus on the substance. That is something I wish I would have seen a lot more of in, in some of these movies, you know, wonder woman succeeded with it. Mm. Um, even, even in certain angles, man of steel did. And even Batman V Superman, because they did focus on these characters being a little edgier, a little grittier, a little more controversial, you know, mm-hmm. in man of steel, Superman is faced with the decision to have to kill Zod Mm-hmm. in order to save lives and he's yeah. put into a very 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 complicated and compromising position of do i break my golden rule mm-hmm. and save these people's lives or do i let these people die because you know mm-hmm. Zod is intent one second Woo! sorry sinus is <laughs> flared up for a second um oh, and yeah you know he was he was put in a very compromised position Mm -hmm. And then Batman v Superman, you see a Batman that is so disillusioned with the world that he's, you know, he's killing the enemy. And I did appreciate the complexity they gave, but I wish more around the film focused on that. Yeah. (laughs) Ah, there we go. So, yeah, you know, that is uh, that is something that I wish the DCU was doing a little more when it comes to the complexity of their characters. Yes, I totally agree. You're absolutely right. Um, I think in in until the, the Snyder cut, um, Wonder Woman did great in doing that, and I think Aquaman did great in doing that. Um, not so much uh, Man and uh, Man of Steel or uh, Justice League, uh, unfortunately, because uh, they're you know it's just yeah they they just didn't didn't do it and. It's one thing to have a special effects, but if if it goes notice to the point where it interrupts the story, then it's not working. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it wants to and you know accentuate the story and enhance the story and give it more depth. But if it's just like there, it's like okay, why why is that there? You know? So yeah, I totally agree. Now, but talking about CG, we're going to segue into one of my favorite uh, genres of movie, the monster verse. Oh, 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 yes. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Godzilla versus Kong. I mean, you know, yep. uh, Skull Island came out. We was like, oh, my God, this is what? And then they had Godzilla, King of the Monsters, and and, and the other one. I'm just like, oh, my, this is this is all right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, all right, a few questions. Ask away. Who's going to win, Godzilla or Kong? Um, I think, and it's it's interesting what you learn on the internet, <laughs> just <laughs> reading about people's perceptions of this movie. Um, I think that King Kong is going to win, and the reason behind that is because I think everyone is going into this film expecting mm-hmm. Godzilla to win. Godzilla is very much portrayed as a much more powerful creature. Mm-hmm. He um, is very, um, you know, he can breathe fire. He can just, you know, pretty much destroy cities yes. with his bare hands, you know, with his, yeah. his fists and his, his feet. Mm-hmm. But I think a lot of people are going into this with a very underestimated view mm-hmm. of King Kong. Yes. You know, there is a lot that King Kong can utilize around him. He's got more of a grip with his hands. Mm-hmm. than godzilla does yeah and i think a lot of people are going into this with a very very set idea that godzilla is the stronger character or the stronger creature 
mm-hmm. and has the advantage. So I think yeah. that King Kong is going to win because people are expecting Godzilla to win. Um, and I have been going through uh, a lot of these films from the uh, from the franchises. Mm-hmm. You know, I've seen just about. As far as the major ones, I've seen all of them. You know, mm. King Kong from 1933, Godzilla yeah. from 1954. Mm. And then you start getting into, like, there was a, a King Kong in 1976 that was very disappointing to a lot of people. Mm. Then, of course, there's the Peter Jackson Kong from 2005 and track back to the very disappointing 98 Godzilla mm. that Roland Emmerich directed, the director of Independence Day. And um, looking back... And having gone through these movies, I will say that the first two on the list, which are the 1933 King Kong and the 1954 Godzilla, are incredible movies. Yes. Especially for their time. And having gone back and watched them, I think one of the first things I really kind of need to mention, especially regarding King Kong specifically, Mm -hmm. there are certain aspects of King Kong that I don't think have aged very well. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, especially the portrayal of the people that inhabit the island. Um, I think there are some things that maybe today wouldn't fly yeah. uh, that might be perceived as a little insensitive. And I think it's very much a reflection of, you know, the, the film industry in the early 30s. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a lot has changed. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have truly progressed um, in the film industry today. Mm-hmm. But back in the 30s, there was a lot they could get away with. And it is very noticeable. It's not just certain cultural representations. Mm -hmm. It's also the treatment of women. You know, and watching this film today, you know, I took those two angles and separated them. When I look at the film from a technical Mm -hmm. and filmmaking level, I mean, it is incredibly well made on those angles. I mean, it looks real for 1933. The way they they constructed this creature and the way he moved and Mm -hmm. the way they used tricks to show him destroying these set pieces was Mm -hmm. just phenomenal. Absolutely. You know, but I also have to acknowledge, as I said, is that, you know, there are certain things in that film that have not aged very well Mm -hmm. uh, regarding cultural representation and the treatment Mm -hmm. of women. And, you know, we can now... We know that there's an industry that when these characters are featured in films that is going to be more aware and more sensitive to these things. Yes, so absolutely. Definitely. And then the 1954 Godzilla is a masterpiece on so many levels. Just you know, the first time I watched the film, I went into it expecting a very basic monster movie, and what I got was a film with a lot of depth. Uh, there's a lot of character complexity there's a lot of great acting Mm -hmm. uh there's a very very deep underlying message about nuclear testing exactly that's what i was going to mention incredible yeah and Mm -hmm. just even the way they slowly revealed the monster was brilliant Mm -hmm. and i really loved it i really loved it absolutely you 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 know of course did perfectly you're absolutely correct um yeah godzilla came about as the warning if you would as the the potential of you know radiation you know and and the uh you know atomic bomb and all this other stuff you know the fallout and all that everything that could be detrimental to people you know (laughs) you know and and that's that's a really big thing um yeah in the uh you know, in King of the Monsters, I liked that they brought in other monsters that were like slumbering and everything. I thought that was like a really cool uh, thing to do. And uh, in Skull Island, when they brought in King Kong, you know, it was it, they made sure that they let everybody know, yeah, he's he's just a teenager, you know, what I'm <laughs> he's like yeah. he's just a kid, you know, type of thing. Yeah. And then and so when they bring him back, you know, if I, I, I watch social media too, and I I hear yeah. all the thing, well. Uh, they had this one little 15 second, um, I would call it meme, but it's more like a gift because it was funny because it was like they had Godzilla, Kong, Godzilla, both atomic breaths, Kong turning into mm. this big pile of ash, yeah. fights over, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm like, really? Nah. And so yeah. when I saw the trailer for the first time, I had to talk about it because it was just like so dynamic because they was like, okay, yeah, 
And a lot of people were asking the question, you know, hey, how's he so big? How's he so big? But when you think about it, in Skull Island, they mentioned he was only a kid. He was still growing, you know. Yeah. And you, and it wasn't like the next day he fought Godzilla. It was years, years later. So he's going to continue to grow. And, yeah. And you know, and then the, the inner Earth thing as well. So and now, and and God's uh, not Godzilla. King Kong always built weapons. Even in yeah. Skull Island, he made a weapon. Batter up. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So he always built weapons. He always created things so that he could win or get the edge in a fight. And why would he do anything different in, in this battle? You know? Yeah. And um, and so like even and, and I'm 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 for King Kong. I call him King Kong. They call him Kong. I think that's a legality thing, so they can't yeah. probably mention King Kong. You know. Yeah, it's uh, I can actually explain why that is. Um, <laughs> so King Kong mm-hmm. is a trademark of Universal Pictures. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are the ones who distributed the original films. Mm-hmm. And eventually when uh, Warner Brothers got the rights to Godzilla mm-hmm. uh, for future films and a franchise and they wanted to incorporate King Kong into it, they had to get rid of the king. Mm. because King Kong is a universal trademark and Warner Brothers is actually doing these movies. Mm. So they call him Kong to differentiate it. So yeah, that's why. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for that. Sure. Sure. I was like, call him King Kong. He earned it. You know? mm. <laughs> and so when I was watching, you know, uh, Skull Island, Kong Skull Island, I, you know, I enjoyed watching all these different monsters and stuff on the island, and mm-hmm. and uh, King Kong is like the sheriff of the island. <laughs> he yeah. goes around making sure things thing is copacetic and everything. You know, the rebel rousers or the skull crawlers, I call them rebel rousers. <laughs> you know, they he had to go and do his sheriff thing and and put them yeah. in place. <laughs> But, um, you know, I, I think the uh, Godzilla versus Kong is going to be a good movie. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, and the way that they did it, it made it believable. It was like, it wasn't like they just pushed it together, like, okay, fight. You know, no, they have a good, solid story behind it and they, a reason for why they're doing it and everything like that. And, and it, is, it has depth to it, you know, which is something we were talking about in, in relation to... Uh, the uh, DC universe, it has depth to it and, and, and it tells a good story and, and it's like, okay, it's engaging. And so it's, it's like, okay, yeah, so what happens next, you know? And you know, everybody's gonna pick their side. I'm for Godzilla, I'm for King Kong, you know, I'm for Mechagodzilla, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, speaking of Mechagodzilla, uh, there's some that say that Mechagodzilla is not in there. I'm almost 90% uh, positive that the Mechagodzilla is in there uh, in the movie. I don't know how big a role he's going to play. What I think is that uh, that uh, King Kong and Godzilla is going to fight. Godzilla may win, but Godzilla is going to allow him to live. And then Godzilla is going to fight Mechagodzilla. This is my hypothesis. <laughs> Godzilla is going to fight Mechagodzilla He's going to get his butt kicked because he's already tired from fighting King Kong. And then uh, there's, uh, there's a wait, there's more. And then King Kong is going to get up, save Godzilla's butt <laughs> and be like, you go your way. I go mine. I'm still not bound down to you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's what I think. Uh, what, are your, what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> I think it's a good theory. Um, I definitely agree that... Uh... Whoever wins, Mm -hmm. the winner will allow the loser to live. Mm -hmm. Um, I definitely think. Because I think what they will do is eventually build up something where they have to team up. Mm -hmm. That's exactly. Because initially, before the producers, whoever, established that, oh, hey, there's going to be a clear winner in this film. Mm -hmm. I was on the assumption that, okay, there's not going to be a winner. They're going to eventually be put in a situation where they have to team up. Mm -hmm. And then when they said, oh, there's a clear winner, I go, okay. Whoever wins will allow the loser to live. They'll go their separate ways. They'll do their own thing. Mm -hmm. And then I think at some point they'll make a film where these two have to come together. 
Yes. So it's definitely something I think they will do. Absolutely. Absolutely. If Mechagodzilla is in this movie, they might actually team up temporarily mm -hmm. <laughs> to defeat Mechagodzilla. Because from yeah. what I've been reading, uh, if it's correct, Mechagodzilla was created from the brain of one of the Ghidorah heads. So mm -hmm. uh, Mechagodzilla is putting off that signal. And uh, my theory is that's why Godzilla is going around destroying all these apex facilities and everything like that. Because he's picking up on the, the signal waves, if you would, of Ghidorah. And he's trying to find where's Godor, you know, and he's destroying yeah. all these things, uh, trying to find them out or uh, uh, pull them out, you know, so that he could, you know, smash them again. <laughs> Absolutely. And the reason why I think, you know, Godzilla and Kong are going to fight is that, you know, you can't have in this world, a uh, beast world or whatever you want to call it, you can't have two alphas, you know, one has to be the dominant one, you know, and in the storyline from the trailer they actually said that there can only be one you know one will fall one will win you know yada 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 and there were ancient war between the two different you know species and they're the last one standing so to yeah. say and so that's what led me to believe that uh kong is gonna lose is because of some of these shots now if they fight in the water, Godzilla is clearly going to be the winner because Godzilla yeah. can breathe on the water. So, absolutely, you know. But uh, if they fight on land, Godzilla—I mean, Godzilla, King Kong has a better chance of winning if they fight on land. Okay, yeah. I think the reason why I think uh, King Kong is still going to lose is because Godzilla has still have the weight advantage, even though they're technically the same size. God, uh, Godzilla has a weight advantage and he still have the atomic breath, which could be limited with the uh, battle axe as we've seen in the trailer. But, you know, uh, every limiter has its limits. <laughs> so, and I think that Godzilla is going to be allow King Kong to live, but he's going to be like, you know, I'm, I'm the, I'm the man, you know, whatever, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm the monster, whatever, <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm the king of the monster, you know, um, that's what I'm thinking now. I don't know if that's what's going to happen. That's just my theory. Yeah, uh, sure. you know, um, what are your thoughts oh, uh, uh, from what you've seen? Um, I think that, you know, like I said, I think the loser allow or the winner allowing the loser to live and then having a situation where the two need to team up, I think is very plausible. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, in all honesty, I think you make a great point in saying Godzilla wins, allows Kong to live, and then the two have to go through and, you know, work with Mecha Godzilla, or it could even be. But I, I generally, I kind of just sit with the idea that a lot of people are underestimating Kong. They, yeah, I they agree. feel Godzilla will be the one, but <laughs> I think I think Kong will win it, and I think that's the thing because he's not King Kong right now. Mm -hmm. Something tells me that this having him win might build up because they've already established Godzilla is the king of the monsters. Yes, yes, yes. But the loophole is that Kong isn't necessarily a monster. He's a giant animal. Yeah, that's true. And I that's... think that's going to be the way to put the king on the Kongs. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, okay. That makes sense. But, you know, I, I remember, uh, if, I, if I remember correctly, there was a release out uh, a script that basically, you know, when uh, Godzilla did his monster call, if you will, and all the monsters came to him and bowed down. I think King Kong also heard the call and was like, man, I ain't worried about that. <laughs> you know, just kind of <laughs> kind of went his other way. Like, nah, you know, you go do your thing. I'm over here, you know? And so, but yeah, I think that... Uh, that was it. And then and then, uh, in the trailer, the lady was like, Kong bows to nobody, you know? <laughs> and so I thought that was really interesting as well, because it's like, yeah, Kong ain't bowing down to nobody, you know? So uh, I, I think you're right. I think that they are underestimating uh, King Kong a great deal, uh, especially if you look through social media, everybody's like, Godzilla, Godzilla, you know, atomic breath, blah, 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 whatever. I'm like, okay, yeah. 
but on, and the, but the only reason I would say that Godzilla would uh, lose, but I actually think that Godzilla would win, even though I'm for Kong, I'm 100% for Kong. But the only reason why I say Godzilla would win is because the area that they're fighting in and Kong cares about the people a little bit more than Godzilla do. Godzilla just is like you know, a, a, a regular prime animal. He only cares about the fight, you know, tumble over some buildings. Kong <laughs> cares a little bit more about the people. So that also may distract him from actually, uh, you know, fighting, you know, and if you get distracted during the fight, that could cost you to fight, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So that's why I was thinking, okay, yeah, he might win. Because if, 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 uh, if what I've seen in the trailer is accurate and they showed it from the right angle, it kind of looked like Godzilla was on top of Kong, you know, yelling down at him. If that was true, then uh, God, that's basically showing a clear sign that Godzilla won. Because if you have all that weight on top of you and he's looking down at you like, yeah, what? You know, <laughs> you know, it's like, OK, yeah. But if it, I could be looking at it wrong, I could be or they just, you know, I could be like, you know, translating it wrong. <laughs> but, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, a, a lot of mysteries there. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So that's why I was like, yeah, who, who would win? You know, so it's going to be interesting to see that comes out at the end of this month. I'm really, really yeah, amped on first. it. Absolutely. I'm actually already, you know, with the theaters open to capacity, I went on the AMC app and reserved my seat in the corner away from everyone for <laughs> opening day. So I'll be catching it and, you know, we'll find out. Who absolutely the big one. I'm, I'm, I'm excited absolutely absolutely thank you well thank you Adam so much for being here man I sure appreciate you being back here on the show man you're awesome uh any closing remarks you want to say to the people man anything um really just first and foremost to you Isaac thank you for having me on here um it's always a pleasure chatting with you uh it's always fun to talk with you and you know just discuss movies so I'm humbled and thankful that you had me back. Thank you directly for that. Uh, anything I just want to say to the people is keep watching movies. You know, the world is a crazy place. You know, there's a lot going on on a daily basis, uh, especially the last year of our lives. You know, the world has been very different. And the joy of cinema has really, for me personally, just, you know, kept me going. You know, just sitting down every day or any day that I can and watching a movie when the sun goes down and, just enjoying that escape, that immersion into moving images and characters and stories, you know, mm -hmm. keep watching movies. Eventually we're going to have a normal world again where cinemas are fully open. And, you know, right now we do have the convenience of being able to watch the film at home on H or at least particular films on HBO max. And, you know, but once that cinema is fully available and it's safe and you feel comfortable going, you know, keep the joy of sitting in a movie theater alive. You know, that's the way to experience these stories. And, you know, we'll have everything back to normal soon and just hang in there and be good to each other. Absolutely. You know, it's the best thing I can say. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with you 100 percent. One of my favorite things is to go to the movies and just forget about everything, embed myself into the movie whether I'm going to be the hero of the movie or the villain. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just enjoying it, you know what I mean? So I'm yeah. looking forward to doing that again. And, and yeah, as Adam said, you know, be good to each other and, you know, continue to support uh, movie and cinematic uh, theaters and everything like that. It is a pleasure and an honor to have you here again, Adam. Thank you Pleasure's so much, mine. man. You know what I'm saying? All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Isaac. Next time. No problem, man. All right. All right, y'all. Bye, <laughs> guys. Thank you so much. Isaac, you be well, my friend. For sure. <laughs> Thanks, man.